cryptocurrency is it in a dip or it's dead it's gotten very quiet in the crypto world you remember when we was talking about Dogecoin, especially when we had uh, the president and CEO of Tesla, Mr. Elon Musk, come out and say, hey, we're not going to start taking Dogecoin payments. We've seen all type of thing. When Bitcoin hit its all time high, about 60 to 69,000, if I'm correct, everybody was on it. Everybody had the fear of missing out. Everybody was talking about it. Now it's gotten very quiet. So has the NFT market. So these markets have gotten very quiet. I think it's the best time to start talking about it. Because usually, you know, they say, I can't remember who said, I know James will probably know it, I guess today. When blood in the streets, right? That's when it's time to buy. Is there blood in the streets right now in the crypto world? Or has the crypto world just been exposed for the scam that it is? So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I got a special guest that you guys and girls can see coming in all the way live from New York, most like the New Jersey, you know how that tri-state area is. He's a friend of the show. It's Uncle James. Some of you may know him as James Fortland. But James, how you doing today, sir? I am doing excellent. It's great to see you. Great to see you too. Great to see you. That's a nice shirt you got on too, James. Did you get a haircut? Uh, I did today. I, I got a haircut just for your show and just I'll for your audience. I want to look good. I want to look sharp. Nice. So, you know, it's, it's, it's been a few months since you've been on. I like to have you, you know, recurring every couple of months to get that insight. You know, people love to have you on. They love to see you. First, I want to say thank you for all you have done to support the book drive, the Wesley Learns book drive that has been going on. Thanks to everybody who's contributed to it to get children's books, the Wesley Learns children's book on investing credit insurance into kids' hands around the globe. So I want to definitely appreciate you and thank you for that. Let me give you a little round of applause for that. <laughs> Now let's get into it, James. What's going on? You know, back in the day, you was calling it Bitcoin, right? Is it Bitcoin, yeah. or is this is a dip. What's going on in the crypto yeah. world? What do you think? Well, you know, like the way they talk about, you're either a, a a crypto minimalist or a crypto maximalist, and I was sort of a crypto. I don't know what's less than minimalist. I was kind of way out there. I, I was. I Jamie Dimon kind of reminded me today of uh, the other day. He came out and he said. Uh, that a lot of these tokens are just like a decentralized Ponzi scheme. Uh, but it, but if you listen to his whole quote, there's about 90 seconds of it. He talks about how blockchain is a significant technology that JP Morgan uses a lot of it. But he was concerned, he voiced concern about a lot of these, uh, at least the way I read it, about a lot of these like altcoins and some of these things like Dogecoin that don't really have an underlying technology underneath them. Uh, I would say right now we're in a big era of uncertainty with with Bitcoin with with crypto. Uh, you have a, you've had a lot of scams. You've had a lot of hacking. Uh, you've had a lot of a lot of it's gotten found out. Like you said, some of it some of it really turned into Ponzi schemes. It may not have been planned that way, but it it played out that way. Um, you have some big issues with some of the stable coins like Tether. There's a lot of debate over whether they really have the assets or not. Uh, there's, uh, you have big, like a lot of lawsuits. You still have that XRP lawsuit with the, with the, the SEC going on. Um, I, you know, I broke out the yellow pad, so that's how serious I oh, am yeah. tonight. I, I would say that like this, we have a big cloud of uncertainty. Um, the other issue I, I like, and you kind of pointed at it a little bit at the beginning of the show, is is maybe this whole presum pres uh, pres uh, presumption, this whole idea that this decertified finance or decentralized finance, um, and this 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 system of decentralized self policing fact checking system, maybe it really doesn't work at all. And I was thinking about it, uh, I would say before President Obama became, before he was President Obama, around 2006, there was this big rave about something called crowdsourcing. And as you, you know, I have, a, I have a news blog that I run in northern New Jersey, which is basically like local news and with some finance and stuff like that, but it's mostly local news. Uh, and in, in general, the crowdsourcing was the premise behind the blog. We figured guys like you who live locally would go, hey, I know a lot about high school football, and I want to tell you this one team is the best team I've ever seen in my entire life, and you might submit an article or write a big comment, and I could turn that comment into a, a post on the blog. Um, and if it, it, it worked, 
but it, there was some shortfalls. The idea between crowdsourcing is the theory is, is that a group of um, uh, independent minded individuals who have some knowledge of a certain area can probably come up with better solutions than say some very focused professional experts, quote unquote. Uh, and for somebody like me, that sounds really great because I'm, I'm always the guy who goes, all these experts you see on TV, they always seem to be wrong about everything, but they're always on over and over again. I mean, so like we always we used to say on wall street, even a broken clock is right twice a day, but there's some guys who can't even match that. They're, they're just, they're so consistently wrong. I can't get over it. I can't believe they're still getting trotted out. Um, but anyway, the problem with the crowdsourcing becomes over time, that group of, of independent minded individuals becomes partisan and they become kind of a conformist blob and they lose that flexibility and they lose the, the char kind of like you see the way Facebook is kind of devolves. Like when Facebook first started, it was a lot of people talking about their kids and having fun and, you know, hanging out and meeting old friends and talking to high school, their high school sweetheart and things like that. And now it's all people screaming and yelling about everything, arguing about every stupid thing you can't even believe. And it really turns a lot of people off. And I, and it, that seems to be the nature of the crap. Hmm. Um, so I'm wondering if this same thing is with the blockchain, for example, this decentralized, well, if you look at a lot of the cryptos, um, much, much of these cryptos are held by small groups of people. I mean, Bitcoin is certainly held by a, a majority of it is held by a very small group of people. I want to say this, James, remember when everybody's like, oh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is going to be the hedge to inflation. It's going to be yes. the hedge to the stock market. And now it's time to put that rubber to the road. You're like, hey, look at inflation. It's up at 9%. Yep. Bitcoin is not hedging. It's going down, yes. And and the market funny. is going down. There's no hedge. What's going on? Has it been exposed? Yes. What do you think about Interesting. that? Interesting. I was just watching a video uh, with Anthony Scaramucci in it. And he mm -hmm. was talking about he runs uh, Skybridge uh, capital or something like that and they actually run sort of a of a small like an, e, uh, an etf that's uh has sort of crypto industry or digital asset industry companies in it um and he said that we he said that 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 idea that bitcoin is an inflation hedge has now been tested and failed <laughs> it's, mm. it's not it's clearly at least right now it's not an inflation hedge it may be someday but right now it is not um, and I, I kind of agree. I think that was something that I kind of thought, well, maybe because uh, Bitcoin seemed to trade like a commodity. And I thought, well, maybe that will work. But it, it certainly has not worked. Um, I look at it. We, there's about four basic issues that I think uh, have, have maybe five that all have to be addressed that needed to be addressed five years ago that still need to be addressed. Mm -hmm. um, the first one is we all see it. What does the token price have to do with the underlying technology? That's the first problem. We, there doesn't seem to be a link between often what the token price is and what the technology is that's under that token. Or for that matter, some of these tokens, like these old coins, don't have any technology under them. They're like poker chips. They're, they're sort of for gambling. Uh, so that's one issue. The second issue is this premise, like maybe it, this decentralized fi finance is just, or decentralized decision-making and fact-checking is, it just doesn't really work because mm -hmm. crowdsourcing didn't really work. At the end of the day, it doesn't really work. Um, what's the other thing? The big, the third thing would be the slow adoption rate. I've come, I come from, I still remember the dot-com era. And man, there was like, and there were guys out there like, this is going to make grandma's drugs cheaper. This is going to do this for you. This is going to help Joe Sixpack. This is going to make his life a lot better. This is going to even the playing field. But with crypto, all you hear is a bunch of engineers talking about all this like obscure stuff that you have to be an engineer to understand. Mm. Nobody's sitting there going, this is going to help grandma buy her medicine better. Like there, we're mm. still not seeing that. It's, it's not converting. For example, yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like that. that was the gym because you 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 were here and you were, you know, of course, I was here, too, in the dot com bomb. The Internet started to become a thing in the mid late 90s. when It's like, oh, the Internet, the Internet, the Internet. You know, I was like a teenager at that time. But you as an adult and you saw how 
that people was kind of adopting it and you're saying, hey, with cryptocurrency, you know, but some people are saying, hey, it's going to advance us. We're going to be able to do money transactions faster. You know, it's going to turn the financial industry upside down on its head. What do you got to say that when you compare that? Well, I think the problem right. that it's running into is is the regulatory and the the status quo problem. I, I think your, your biggest issue and, and the problem is the people involved in crypto very much believe for, in one hand, they they love the government. But on the second hand, they somehow think that that same government uh, that's all powerful and all knowing um, is going to let them create the print their own money and have their own currency and do all these things that the government without government involvement and the government is not going to let you do that i i just i i just this idea that we're going to be able to we're going to be making our own money and like i it's i just don't think it's really going to happen and you saw the biden administration came out i guess two days ago with their what did they call it i had to write it down because it had this great name mm -hmm. uh the framework for responsible oh yep 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 digital assets wow that's a mouthful at the end of the day what was the focus maybe the most important thing is they they once again said the treasury wants to make a digital dollar what does that mean that means bye bye crypto because the government wants to control it they're not they're not going to let you run wild on your own i mean it may happen but they're they're not going to let this so easily happen and i i think that's that's what you're running into i i think some there is some adoption like banks are certainly using certain blockchain to transfer money around a lot faster um it, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of high-end stuff that that's happening but for a lot of people in your life you don't see the benefit really like regular you and me like i get up every day i i do the like i don't see how blockchain is doing anything for me. i see how the internet is doing stuff for me every single minute but blockchain maybe not it's not as obvious mm -hmm. um so i i think i think we're running into a lot of that um, I think, again, going back to the adoption thing, I think, you know, what do we get? We got the closest thing we got to something that everybody was kind of talking about a little bit was the NFTs. Mm -hmm. And that kind of died out as fast as it started. And at the end of the day, it, it was really a small group of people that was really involved in that. It's just, it's, it's not getting disseminated. It's not being embraced by the public because the public, it, you, you need you need to know too much to be able to use it. You know, there's, there's just too many uh, steps to climb up to get to it. Um, I can remember when Netscape went public, the big joke was like, even an idiot like you can go on the internet now. <laughs> and that, that, no joke. That's what they were saying. And I mean, the people from Netscape were basically saying, you don't have to know how to read to use this thing and go on the internet. And this is going to totally level the playing field. Mm. There's, you'll be able to compete with anybody with no money. All you need is an internet connection at Netscape, and you'll you'll know as much as anybody knows. Now, that's not really true, but you 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 at one point you had access to certainly an awful lot of an awful lot more information that you would normally than you were up to that point very rapidly. So there's there's like these issues are floating around, and I and I think. They're the same issues. You could go back five years and we weren't getting fast enough adoption. There was the issue, is Big Brother going to let all these little brothers take over? I'm, I'm not so sure. I, don't, I just, I, That's probably the biggest thing I have trouble with. I just and, don't and, believe it. And when you talk about the framework that Joe Biden put out, I mean, it was something I saw coming from a mouth. I mean, anybody can see that. Um, I did not think the government was going to go out and say, hey, Let's get onto let's put our currency onto this system we really don't even know who owns or whatever right. we know it was created from, and let's just do business there. I said what they're gonna do is they're gonna take it, they're gonna copy it, they're gonna figure out a way to reverse engineer it. That's what that framework said is that we're gonna yep. find the biggest brains in the world and we're gonna create our own system and we're gonna run off our system. I knew that was gonna happen, but I said, Well, will that make Bitcoin more relevant or will it just you know, it's just like for prime example, I started this children's book series seven, eight years ago, right? When I was when I came in, it really was nobody in that investing mm -hmm. credit insurance space, right? Right. Now you're seeing more people come along. Does that catapult me or does that drown you out? 
that's the thing that I was kind of looking at with, you know, because yes. you know, with me, when it when it when you have more people doing something and you push more energy into a industry or a sector, you know, it's kind of like what's that old saying? All tides rise to boats or whatever the case may be. Right, right. A rising tide lifts all boats. It's exactly. You know, the rising tide lifts all boats. So it's like, hey, wait, we all get to go up with this wave, or does it come in and, and it just eliminates everybody else? So that was my thing. That was I was like, well, yeah, I, 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 I agree with that's a, that's a great analogy. That's a that's a fantastic analogy. I, I just think that's the that's the issue. I'm I'm way more skeptical. Having being a little older, I'm way more skeptical of, uh, you know, and and it may not be some. Don't don't get me wrong. It doesn't mean the government is like malicious in some way, but I think often they're they're when they when they address things they either make things worse or they address it in a way that works better for them because if we're all using currency that they can't track how are they going to tax us how are they going to they're not going to let that happen that's like to me that's that always was like the biggest like people talked about that and like unless you believe the whole world everything's just going to collapse and the only thing that's going to be left is crypto um but but then again, the problem I have with that is then the internet's not going to work. So what are you going to do with your crypto? You're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like you know, like the internet's unplugged. That's it. We're like, there's no, you know, crypto doesn't mean anything then. So uh, I I I think that you know it's funny because a couple of people said that like this this thing from the Biden administration was just kicking the can down the road again. It's the same old over and over again. And it didn't really do anything, and it didn't mean anything. Like kind of like you said, and and it, uh, I I I think that's a that's a big issue. I think some of the, I mean, banks can look at this as a threat. Some people said, I I read this thing on Twitter the other day. A guy said, "You're not going to ask a, a guy who owns a taxi how how great Uber is. You're not going to ask a hotel company to tell you about uh, Airbnb." So why would you ask a banker to tell you about Bitcoin? Like that's, they're just not going to like that no matter what happens. Oh yeah. And so I got to ask you this question right now. If you are 30 years old, you see in the state of cryptocurrencies right now, do you dollar cost average and buy it out the dip, start to put a little bit of money in every month, or do you just strap it, count your losses? What do you do? I'm see. I'm still like, and, and this goes probably with the stock market as well. Remember, whatever it was a couple of months ago, the last time I was on, I told you, I told everybody, buy an e-bike, go sailing all summer, just forget about the market, come back after the election, and because it's just going to be a really rough market, it's going to drive everybody crazy, and you're you're not going to get anywhere, and you're probably going to lose a lot more money than you make, and so here we are moving along, and I think this goes for both crypto. I think. I'd like to see a big wipeout yet. Like I, I like like I always joke when Jim Cramer cries, it's time to buy. And so when he's on his knees on TV crying in the middle of a total wipeout, you know it's time to buy. Or you know, or it, it just it it it. We haven't quite gotten to that washout yet, where everybody's just like like I see when I see. Uh, like Bitcoin, Bitcoin's been fluttering around that twenty thousand dollar range. Like there for it, it's rallied up, then it's back down, then it goes a little below, then it goes back up. It's kind of been stuck around there. And I, I usually you get you need like the bottom is going to be some like deeper low than anybody expects, and 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 there's going to be a lot of screaming and crying. And and that's we haven't quite seen that yet. We're we may be getting closer. We may be getting real close here because we're running out of time. The election's coming, so it's got to be it's got to be before November. That's the way I look yeah. at it. So you're looking at the turnaround. The market is probably going to be at the midterms. Yeah, after the midterms, and I think regardless of what happens, things will change or you'll get better direction. I think right now we have a lot of short term issues that are impacting long term views. For example people are nervous and there's a lot of uncertainty. So they're not going to buy assets like digital assets because they're scared. So that plays in the role. Maybe in the long run, they may prove to be really like Bitcoin may be great because eventually they're going to, they're not going to print anymore. They're going to, they're going to be capped out at whatever is 21 
billion or some, I don't know what the number is, but they're, they're capped out. And maybe at that point, a Bitcoin may move up a lot or may start to change the way it trades once it's capped out. Um, it, it, but right now we have all this, this sort of short-term stuff like press off, just like if you look at the yield curve, the two-year treasury is higher than the 30-year. Now, a lot of people will tell you that's an inverted yield curve, and that means a recession is right around the corner. Well, I'd say we're already in a recession to some degree, or at least a slowdown. Um, yeah. And uh, but I'm not see. I don't. I don't think it's going to be like 2008. I don't think it's going to be some terrible recession. I just think it's going to be more like a nagging slow with certain sectors being disproportionately impacted. I think. That, I think there's other stuff going on right now. Um, so. I, I'm looking at this and I say, you know, you could nibble. I, I, I mean, if you're a long-term guy, like it was, it was Baron Rothschild. And he said, buy when there's blood in the streets. There it is. And there this, it is. And the second part of that quote is, especially if that blood is your blood. So, because he was a Frenchman in the Fr Fr and Napoleon had just lost the Battle of Waterloo. And people were like panicking in Paris and uh, he was, he, he decided to buy because it, it, that blood was his blood. He just started buying. And I, 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 I would say you're, you're getting close. I, I wouldn't try to time the bottom if you're, I, I just keep averaging in. And I think for most people who are long-term people, investors, at least in stocks anyway, you should just be buying and, and you, you should have this thing on automatic. You should just buy every month and, you know, spend your time on your sailboat or your e-bike and spend your time with your kids or work and not worry about trying to time the bottom. I think that's, uh, you're probably not going to hit the dead bottom. Mm. Okay. Well, now we kind of tiptoed around this question, James. What are you doing? Are you buying it this time? Holding off? Buy? Uh, I've been, I've been sitting. Or sell. You know, you're right. You know I've been sitting because I have a lot of oil stocks. So I'm sitting because I know this winter is going to be really ugly. And there is not the capacity out there. There is not a lot of things. And they're doing a lot of stuff right now to get oil prices down, like releasing oil from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve uh, and, and those kind of events. I mean, the, the head of Armaco, the Saudi Arabian oil company, said there's not enough capacity. If the economy picks up at all, we're going to be in huge trouble. There's just there's no way to make enough oil. And it, 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 it's I this this winter is going to be real tough in Europe. They're going to have a rough time. There's going to be a lot of shortages. There's people talking one hundred and fifty dollars a barrel on oil prices. Meanwhile, in the short run, it's going down. The, if you look at natural gas, it's the same thing. There's a huge shortage in natural gas, yet the price is down. Why is the price down? Because there's artificial short-term events that are impacting it. But in three months, or we, it starts getting cold out, I think we're going to see a big, th these prices are going to skyrocket. So, okay. so you me, still hold on to position. Yeah, I'm just I'm just sitting waiting for you know, and you know I'm 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 like you know, but meanwhile I drive my e-bike because I'm not going to pay six dollars a gallon for gas. <laughs> so I'm riding around on my e-bike, but I own an oil stock, so I I got them both ways because I'm like I'm like there's no way I'm paying for all that stuff, and uh, but you know I think I think if you're looking at a lot of technology stocks have really gotten beat up. I think it's it, you could start averaging in. I think I would I would dabble. I'm actually I'm actually looking. Maybe thinking, maybe not buying crypto directly, but buying the companies that are involved in it, like, you know, like the Coinbases and the things like that, whether I buy them directly or I buy them through some ETF like uh, Mr. Scaramucci is running here. He has one. It's called, it's called the ITCO. Well, it's called the First Trust Skybridge Crypto Industry and Digital Economy oh, ETF. Okay. That's, that's, that is a mouthful. <laughs> yeah, that's the. I think the first one was B I T C O or B I O or whatever. Something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, that's how they're trying to get everything get everything back. So yeah. Well, I'm just thinking. You know, you buy the thing. It's like at the low. Like the low is like four fifty. I think it's five fifty right now. That fifty two week high is twenty seven. I mean, if the thing goes to ten, you're like, you're you know, you're in business. I mean, I look I look for a big score. I'd be looking for a lot higher than ten bucks. But you so, know, I'm answering this question, James. So you only do ETFs. You wouldn't mess with the individual. Well, I I you would hop on that Robinhood I, app and just get those random ones that everybody's getting. 
No, I, you know, I, I think that's crazy. I, unless you're really focused on something, you know, one in particular that somehow I think right now, first of all, the, the last thing that I hadn't mentioned yet is the major problem for crypto for somebody like me is crypto needs uh, like a buttonwood agreement like you have in with the with the equity markets. If you don't know what that is, in 1792, uh, a bunch of 24 traders got together in New York and signed an agreement. From that agreement, that created the New York Stock Exchange and basically laid the foundation for the entire modern financial system. It's mm. about a six-line agreement. It's like six sentences. Um, and what crypto needs something, because, for example, when you go on different exchanges, th the same crypto trades at different prices. There's liquidity issues. Who in the world wants to, I like, I like who wants to buy uh, get stuck with a crypto and then you can't sell it like they're they like the exchange shuts you down and you're not allowed to get your money out or whatever uh like those kind of that that i can't deal with there's no way i would i like i that's unacceptable to me um there's uh other other issues for example crypto has no regulation so you and i could open th we could make our own crypto we could make the the prince the prince token yep. and we could open between the two of us 300 accounts and trade between the two of us, all those 300 accounts would trade this Prince token like like 100 times a minute. So it would run up this huge trading volume, even though it's only two of us, and it's really not worth any money. Maybe we put $10 in this whole thing. The exchanges would pick it up because it has a high volume. They'd put it on exchange, and then the greater fool theory would take over. In other words, Tulip, it would be Tulip mania all over. It would run this thing way and up. And then you pay media, you pay media to run articles about oh, like, hey, look at the Prince token. Uh, absolutely. Look at absolutely. We plan it. We get, we get, we get, we get Musk to, you know, buy it. We get, we get whatever. Or some of those other, who's, who's the other guy? The, the guy who owns the Mavericks. The, um, Mark Cuban. Yeah, Mark Cuban. We get Mark Cuban to buy it. Whatever. We're like, we get whatever. The Yankee Stadium, like, you, you, well, you can buy a hot dog for a Yankee Stadium or some crazy thing like that. Yeah. You know, hot dogs like fifteen bucks at Yankee Stadium. So, you get, you know, you can. It's it's uh, you, you, whatever. We promote it and it goes way up, and then we get out way before anybody else does, and then let the whole thing tumble, and uh, we just go. Well, you know what? It's it was very speculative. <laughs> 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 Sorry, you know, you, you, you mortgage your house on that thing but you know that really wasn't a smart thing to do <laughs> mm -hmm. so you know, yeah, yeah. before we head out of here you know our time is up again you know definitely great having you on what do you want to leave everybody there with oh i i, I first of all number one rule is is the markets have ups and downs do not let a bad market dissuade you from continuing to invest if you really believe in this stuff you know, buy it, but be really careful. I would stay away from the individual tokens right now. I would buy maybe, maybe stuff like look at companies like like Coinbase and anybody else involved in this sector that that's really involved. I would look at buying the companies as a way to like buy the stocks of the companies that are involved in it as a way to play the sector. To me, that would be a lot safer. Just average in, they're all creamed right now. Just like a lot of technology is creamed. Um, I remember 2000, if you started buying more technology after the meltdown in 2000, I want to tell you, it was, it was ugly for a long time, but in 10 years, you were, you were a lot richer than you were. You were a lot, lot richer. And you know, you can't fall off the floor when a $90 stock is two bucks after a while. That's as like, even Bear Stearns only went to two bucks when it went out of business. It's, mm -hmm. you know, after a while, there's only, you can only, you know, you can only go to zero. You can't go to negative. So you, you sometimes you're, you just get down there so low. It, it, it starts to like your, your, your loss is not that much if it does, if it bombs out. And if you stick with the equities, a lot of these companies are going to survive no matter what they're going to, they're going to do. They're, they'll do something out like micro strategies. They're big in crypto. I remember when they were big in the internet, like they were, mm -hmm. you know, they were, you know, they'll, they'll do something new. Okay. Well, that's our time, ladies and gentlemen. And to the next video, podcast, cartoon, book, or whatever else crazy you see me doing around the globe, y'all already know my name is Prince Dax. I'm the Prince of Investing. Peace, be safe, I'm out, and thank you.
Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.